Okay, so today we're going to be talking about what a milk machine is, how it operates, and kind of going into what some of the components of the milk machine are and what it means. So that way when you're in the market for one, you're looking at websites, or you want to try and make your own, you actually know what the website's saying and what exactly it is you are getting. Let's go. I'm an engineer by schooling, so I like to think of things as a very, I have a need, how do I complete that need? So with a milk machine, what is that need? That need is to get this into this. So what do I mean by this into that? I mean, how do I get the milk out of the cow's udder into a glass so I can drink it, put it in my coffee, or make cheese out of it? So how do I do that? I can either do it with my hand, by actual mechanical manipulation of my hand, squeezing the milk out of the teat, or I can do it with the machine, which is what we're talking about today. So the main heart of the vacuum system is the actual pump itself, right here. If you do not have a way to create a vacuum, you have no way to create a pressure differential across the teat. Everything else is kind of ancillary or dependent upon this. So the vacuum system starts with an actual vacuum pump. Once you go from that pump, the next thing you're going to hear about is a vacuum regulator. Mine is pretty archaic. It's essentially I'm inducing a leak into the vacuum system to regulate the pressure. But all vacuum systems need a way to regulate that vacuum pressure. Too little pressure, you're not going to be getting milk out of the cow quickly, if at all. Too much pressure, you can cause damage to the cow's teat itself. The next thing which you may or may not have, which my system does not have, there are two things first. One is going to be a pulsator. What the pulsator does is when the teat canal or the teat cup is actually around the teat of the cow, there is a liner in it which is going to massage the teat. That's what the pulsator does. It goes, alternates from the vacuum pressure to atmospheric pressure or something close to atmospheric pressure. So that liner will open and close very rapidly. That's called the pulsator. My system does not have a pulsator, which I'll make another video on why I chose not to do that. Okay, we're going to let the wind die down. We've got some thunderstorms coming through right now. Even though I'm inside, it's still pounding down on the metal roof. One of the uh, joys of living on the Gulf Coast. You get a whole lot of severe thunderstorms coming through. Not normally this time of the year, but hey, whatever. We get what we get. It's rain. It beats the drought we had earlier this summer. The next system, or the next part of the vacuum the milking system, here comes the rain again. I'm just going to keep talking, hopefully you can hear over it. If not, I'll come back and reshoot and re-edit it. So the next part of it is going to be a vacuum chamber. Now the vacuum chamber is dual purpose, per se. More, one of the purposes is to actually regulate the vacuum pressure so you have a consistent vacuum pressure in the system. It works if you have a strong pump and you're not milking multiple, several animals at the same time, that's kind of null and void. Because the large pump can compensate for any fluctuations and maintain a more steady system or more steady pressure. The other function of it, which is more important for a small scale system, is it acts as a catch basin for any fod, any debris, any milk that might get into the vacuum line it will fall into that vacuum chamber instead of being sucked into the actual pump. Once again, my system does not have that. I'll probably go back in and add one a little later, but for the time being, I don't have that. So the next part of the vacuum system is going to be the actual gauge itself. So that way you know what type of pressure you're dealing with when the system is connected to the animal you're milking. And from there, you go into your actual milk lines right here. If you had a pulsator attached, you would have two lines, a vacuum line holding your constant vacuum pressure and a pulsator line coming off of your pulsator to the actual teacup itself. And that pulsator line would be alternating between the vacuum pressure and atmospheric pressure or something close to it. And then these lines just run outside, which if the weather is going to cooperate, we'll take you out there and show you what the rest of it looks like. 
Okay, so the weather's not going to cooperate for me to go outside and film the rest of this. We have some severe thunderstorms coming through. We're actually under a tornado warning at the moment, so somewhere out there there's a tornado heading my way, but teaching you about milking systems is far more important than seeking shelter at the moment. So the milking lines and the pulsator lines come to the actual teacup itself. So the teacup, you have the liner, which is the part that will actually go over the teat. And then you have the teat cup, which will hold the liner. Now, the system that I use, since I don't have a pulsator, I use something by Utterly Easy, if that will focus. They're not a sponsor of this video. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I just like their product, mainly for simplicity and ease of cleaning. So, the vacuum lines will come into the actual teat cup where you have the liner. If you're using a system with a pulsator, you'll also have an area to connect the pulsator. Typically, the pulsator will go around where the teat liner goes, and then the vacuum line will come down into your collection system. Since this does not have a pulsator, the vacuum line goes into both around the teat cup and the collection system itself. So, liner into teat cup, into most systems will have vacuum and milk lines, which will draw the milk from the, the cow down into the actual milk collection system. In my system, which is one of the reasons why I like this, is I don't have any lines to clean. Because part of the milking process is, once I'm done getting the milk out of the cow, I have to clean up. I like to be efficient. Well, my wife calls me lazy, but I call it efficiency. Take it as you will. Um, I don't like having to clean extra things. So what I love about this system is the milk goes directly into the jar. So I jar fills up, I dump it into a bucket, and then all I have is this and this to clean. I have no lines, I don't need fancy brushes where I have to pull the brush through the line with the cleaner and then hang dry everything. It's, it's pretty simple and I can do it really quick. So to recap, what, is, what are the components of the milking system? I have the vacuum pump, which is necessary to create the pressure differential across the teeth. I have a regulator so I can control the vacuum pressure so I don't hurt the animal and I can actually get the milk out at a flow rate which is sufficient for milking. I have a pulsator if I so choose to want one. I have a vacuum chamber if I so choose to want one, which I personally can go back in and add a vacuum chamber into mine just to protect my pump. And then I have the teat cup, the liner, and all the lines associated with it, the vacuum line, the pulsator line, and then the collection system. I hope that helps kind of demystify how a milking machine works, what are the different process or parts of it, so that way when you're in the market for one or you're trying to build one yourself, you know a little bit more about what you're looking at and what you're getting yourself into. Anyway, I hope you like, subscribe, and share. See you next video.